This is 8, 5. And what we're trying to do is work with this circuit here. And we have A, B, and C. Part A, we want to find the current at 0 plus and the voltage at 0 plus. At part B, we want to find the derivatives here. This is actually, this is written incorrectly. This should be di 0 plus divided by dt. Yeah, that should instead of that okay this and that and then we need to find the current and the voltage a long time in the future at time equals infinity so we have this uh, unit step function here for the current source so what this means is this is going to be zero for time is less than zero and it's going to be four for time is greater than zero now, to figure out part A of this problem, let's first take a look at t equals zero minus. And let's draw the circuit. So at zero minus, the current source is gonna be zero. So we're gonna have something like this. Resistor here. And then we're gonna have our capacitor here. And then we're going to have our inductor and then our resistor. And we know that this is voltage V here. This is 6 ohms, 1 Henry, and 1 fourth Farad, and 4 ohms. Okay, and we have our I here as well. Now I'm going to label some currents. Let's call this here VC, the voltage across the capacitor. We'll call the current here IC, the current across the capacitor. And we'll call this IL, the current across the inductor. And let's take a look at this circuit here. And I guess we could call this as well the voltage, the voltage across the inductor. So let's take a look at the circuit. And what we have, and we need to figure out I0 plus and V0 plus. So with no source here, we do not have any source. We know that the voltage across the capacitor at zero minus must equal to zero. There's no source here. And because it is a capacitor, this is a capacitor, we know that the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus it must be equal to that. So this must be true. Likewise, we can take the inductor. We know the inductor current at zero minus is zero, and that must also equal the inductor current at zero plus, so that is zero. So, now let's take a look here and look at this and we're going to change this to zero plus now changing this to zero plus this induct this current source now comes on and now we have four amps but we've said here that this voltage c vc is zero is zero which means that this voltage is also zero. And we can label down here as our ground. So if we take a look at the current I, I is going to be equal to this voltage VC minus zero divided by R, which is four. 
right, let's write this correctly. So this is I zero plus, I at zero plus is VC minus zero divided by four. And we know that this value is zero. So it's zero minus zero, which is zero. So that is the, our first answer. Now let's take a look at the current here. We know that the current through the inductor at zero plus is equal to zero. So there is no current here. So the voltage, the voltage at zero plus is equal to IL times R, IL times R, and we know that this is zero. So this value must also be zero. So this is our solution to part A, part A. Now let's start on part B here, and we're looking for the derivatives. So if we found at zero plus that this current here is zero, and this voltage is zero, what is IC? Well, if this current is zero here, then IC, if we do KCL here, this is zero, this is zero, IC must equal four amps, right? Must be equal to this, four amps. Now, if we're looking for DI, zero plus dt. This is what we're looking for. Now, we know that i, i is equal to, i is equal to vc divided by r. vc, the voltage across here, divided by r. So we can write this as, we can sub this in here, and we have D V C over R D T at zero plus. So we're just subbing this in to here. And simplifying this, the R is a constant. Is it a constant? So we can bring that outside. And then we just have D V C at zero plus over dt. Okay. So the, how do we figure out this? Well, if we take a look at this current, we know that the current across a capacitor is equal to C dVc dt. This is the equation that we have for the current across the capacitor. And if we solve this for dVc dt, we get IC divided by C. So we're going to take this value here, this value, and put it in here. So what this comes out to be is one over R times IC divided by C. And we know what R is, R is four. We know what C is, that's one fourth. And IC we just found out was four. So we have this equation one over four times IC which is four divided by one fourth. So that is six, that looks like it is four, four amps per second. And that is di zero plus dt. So that is the first answer. Now for the next part, we'll take a look at our voltage VL. And at time equals zero, if this is zero, 
this must also be at zero volts and this is at also at zero volts so what we have here is the voltage across L is equal to zero. The voltage here is zero, VL is zero. Now let's remember that because what we're gonna do is take a look at the voltage here. V, v is, equal, is equal to six times IL, the current here, six times IL. 6 times IL and if we write this DV DT is equal to 6 times DIL over DT. Okay. So we're just taking the derivative here. Now we know that the voltage across a inductor the voltage across the inductor is equal to L di across the inductor dt. Now if we rearrange this, we, ha we get a D dil over dt is equal to VL divided by L. And we can put this into this equation. So we're gonna put this into this equation. And what we get is dv dt at zero plus is equal to six times vl at zero plus divided by l. Now we know that vl VL is equal to zero. So this term goes to zero and we get this equation dV dt at time zero plus is equal to zero volts per second. And that is our solution for part B. Now for part C of the problem, we're looking to find I infinity and V infinity. So a long time in the future. So after this runs, runs, runs a long time, a long time, this capacitor is going to be acting like an open circuit. So it's gonna act like an open circuit. And this inductor is then going to be a short circuit. So let's draw that circuit here. So we're drawing at time equals infinity. And what we get is inductor or a uh, resistor, and then we have this open circuit, and then we have a short circuit, and then a this is our voltage V, and we have six ohms, and this is four ohms, and we have I, and this is four amps. So this is what the circuit looks like after it runs a long time. And so if we want to figure out I at infinity, right, what is that equal to? Well, I at infinity, we have these in uh, parallel. These resistors are now in parallel. So, we have, we can use a current divider and that is going to be equal to this value divided by six plus four times our current, four amps. And so that is six divided by 10 times four. So six, div uh, six times four is 24 that looks like it's 2.4 amps is that correct 6 24 divided by 10 amps which is then uh, we can write that as 12 over 5 amps so that is our solution for the current at time infinity now let's take a look at the voltage at time infinity.
the voltage here. And we can do that by um, just combining these. These are in parallel. So the voltage will be equal to I times R equivalent, which is equal to our four amps times our R equivalent. These are in parallel, so we have four times times six divided by four plus six. So that is 24 over 10, again, 24 over 10. And then we have times four, what's that come out to be? 48 over five? 48 over five volts. So there is our solution. If we let this run a long time, this, that is going to be our voltage and our current.